Greetings, you all. Kingdom greetings. Apostle Karen Pina here, your glory teacher, heavenly success, and ascension specialist. I'm coming on today to continue in Let the King of Glory In, part two. All right, Let the King of Glory In, part two. All right, so if you missed part one, you'll have to go back and catch the whole thing. But I will do a brief recap to say that we're coming from Psalm 24, remember? And two, and we've been talking about how when you're in business and ministry, how the king of glory is the one that's in control of the release of glory, all right? How that glory is released through you. And in the last session, we talked about different types of businesses and the earning potential, okay, of different types of businesses. I said, in short, that businesses that cater to the flesh, all right, the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, the pride of life, those are the types of businesses, all right, that are that have the potential to make more money, okay? And when it comes to dealing with the souls of men, all right, those are the businesses like maybe a coaching business, okay, where you're dealing with something that's quite frankly, it's a luxury to hire a coach. It's not a necessity. It's a luxury, not a necessity, right? But people are always going to need to eat. So restaurants may have high earning potential. You get the picture, okay? So I just kind of wanted to bring you to where we are today. And in part one, that's what we talked about. Again, if you want to catch the whole thing, go back and listen to the replay. Today, I want to share with you the perfect example, all right, of what it really looks like when you let the king of glory into your business, when you let him be in control, when you, when you let him rule. Wow, it impacts everything about your business. It impacts, obviously, your profitability, which many people know that's the bottom line, right? So it impacts your bottom line, but it impacts your character too. It impacts the people that you can reach, number three. Obviously, the more profitability you have, the more people that you're able to reach, right? In other words, the more impact you're able to make. Money, all right, is a creative power of God, all right? Creativity is an aspect of God's glory. So money, all right, is a creative element of the power of God, the glory of God, all right? So in that vein of creativity, this is why you see a lot of people who are creative, all right? They have a hard time working for other people. They have a hard time being someone's employee. They have that whole entrepreneurial creative, creative, creative side, excuse me, you all, creative side about them. And it's hard to go sit and do, you know, the same rote things over and over and over again. They have a hard time checking in to make the donuts at eight, right? And then being told, okay, now it's time to get off. As a matter of fact, I'm very creative and my trade, okay, my high school trade was cosmetology. And you know, if you're doing hair, you're able to create, you can have a whole vision, all right, about what looks good on a specific person and what type of hairstyle will not look good on a specific individual. This is why you see people and they might bring a picture out of a magazine to a hairdresser and say, I want that style. Well, the hairdresser is going to look at that style. And if that person is highly creative, they're going to say, that's a nice style, but it won't work on you. Look at your face shape. All right. Look at the way your face is shaped. That style is not for you. Okay, so I'm just giving an example, right, of creativity and how you'll see different people who are creative as entrepreneurs, all right? So now, they like to work with their hands, right? They like to see what they can create with their hands. Okay, so you get the picture. Now, the thing is, since this is an aspect of our God, an aspect of his glory, when you let him in, you allow him to create through you, okay? People in the world have already grasped this concept. This is why anything in their unholy imagination and their vain imagination can dream up with or come up with, right? This is why you see movies, right? When you see different movies on the big screen, right, in your movie theater, 
on your TV, someone's unholy imagination, someone's vain imagination, let the God of this world mm, work through them, right? So it's the same concept, except it's the king of glory working through us. And it's amazing how the world gets this premise, but people who are in Christ have a hard time yielding and surrendering and allowing the king of glory in so that he can flow through you and get that glory, release that glory to other people. All right. So now I want to give you an encounter of what this might look like. This literally happened to me. Okay. Today, today. All right. We had a problem with our shower today in the master bedroom and the handle would go all the way over from hot, cold to hot, but the water would not get hot. It wasn't turning hot enough. And so we called out a gentleman because the pipe was behind the wall. He came out to the house. He actually is the brother of someone that painted our house. He came out to the house and he start cutting into the wall and just about when he was about to open up the wall, he said, I'm getting nervous. And I was like, Oh, why? And he said, because I saw the in listen to this. He said, I saw the inside of your wall in a vision. I knew exactly what your wall was going to look like. But more importantly, I saw your problem in the spirit before I even got here. Do, do you see that? This is what it looks like when you let the king of glory in. So he is using, okay, God is working through him in visions. He said, this happens to me frequently with my customers. He says, and not just with my customers, but I see things and they always come to pass, you know, whether it be storm, so forth and so on. Okay. So he, it, it, there's that prophetic edge. There's that seer dimension. All right. This is glory. All right. He, he didn't just see the problem. He was able to see the solution to the problem. And sure enough, he reached in after he cut off everything and he pulled the pipes back toward him and took a two by four in there and braced it went back to the shower, okay, secured the wood there, turned the nozzle, and everything was fixed. It was amazing. It blew my mind. Then he began to share with me how he's in the latter part of his life where he is enjoying his trade as a carpenter. He shared that he has built houses, that God has graced him to build houses in the same manner, all right? Seeing the vision of what the house should look like, knowing where everything should go, and that he's built over 175 houses. And he was just blowing me away. He's made really good money. And him and his 10 brothers, okay, are all in business together. So there's a painter, there's a carpenter, there's a plumber, everything that they need, wow. And they all flow in the same level of grace. They've all let the King of glory come in so that he can work through them and work through the work of their hands. He went on further to share with me that there was a woman because some of these houses he rents out, some of them he sells. Well, he said a couple, a couple years ago, God spoke to him and told him to give a specific lady a house, just give it to her. Right. All he said was to collect a security deposit for her so that, of course, he could prepare the house. All right. For her to move in. This lady is single and she has a child who is paralyzed. So he obeyed God, collected the security deposit and let the lady and her son move in. Fast forwarding to the present. He's on vacation last week, him and his brothers and their wives out in the Dominican Republic gets a call from this lady. The lady says she wants to move out. She's ready to move out. He says, I'm on vacation right now. Can't deal with this. Talk to you when I get back. So he gets back. He gets over to the house and he start explaining to me, no screens on the window, floors with big holes in them. He said there was at least $10,000 worth of damage that this lady has done to the house. 
And on top of the $10,000 worth of damage, she asked him to give her the $1,500, which is half of a security deposit back so that she could take that money and move into another house. It would be, I guess, her first and last month's rent or whatever she needed to move into the house. And he said (laughs) that he was in the middle of a thought of about to be angry. Listen to this. This is what happens when you let the king of glory in and saying something to the lady and God interrupted his thought, brought him into a vision and showed him sitting in court with the lady and her son and the judge, all right, was hearing the case. He saw and he heard what what could potentially happen. And the judge was basically saying, are you kidding me that you wouldn't give this lady $1,500 back irrespective of the damage? Where is she going to go live? You know, how could you do this to a, a, a woman who has a child completely paralyzed and that the judge was going to order him to give her the money? In short, she was going to sue him. God showed him all of this in between his thoughts. So he said he looked at her and God And what God had revealed and knew the decision that he needed to make was to simply give her the $1,500, bless her and send her on her way. That's what it looks like when you let the king of glory be in control. Because see, one way, and it's not the only, okay, there are many ways that we can define what the glory is. Many ways. All right. And you can learn about that either at the Glory Tour that's coming up May 17th and May 18th, 2019 in Houston, Texas. You can go to bit.ly, bit.ly slash general admission. That's capital G for general, lowercase a for admission to learn more about what you will receive. Okay, if you are ready to move in your authority, which includes judging, if you are ready to be led into the glory, if you are willing Okay, to see the king of glory come in to your business and do great things and mighty exploits through you in the marketplace. You want to be there. Okay, bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y, B-I-T dot L-Y, general admission, capital G for general admin. Or just check out the event page on um, Facebook, Glory Teacher, Facebook, Glory Teacher. All right, so he saw all this and he gave her the $1,500 and blessed her, blessed her. Because again, one way that you can define and not the only glory is the character of the nature and the power of God. Okay. Those are three aspects. And again, not the only aspects, but three aspects of his glory. So can't you see in these examples, the character of God, right? Which tells us to bless those that despitefully use us, which tells us to love our enemies. He loved her even though she had destroyed, right? His property. And what do enemies do? They come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. All right? So there's the character of God, the nature of God, and the power. The power because what? He was able to be taken into a vision, shift out of his own natural response of anger, and shift into, see into the realm of the spirit, right? And what fast forward prophetically and see what could happen if he did not do this, what her action would be, what the judge would say. And so he made the wiser choice, which is also an aspect of God's glory. Wisdom, okay, is a part of his nature. He just is wise. He just is good. And you know, goodness is another aspect of of the glory of God. All right. So he was good to her. He was exercising wisdom and he chose to not, all right, do that and moved on about his way. And as a result, God is still yet blessing him. Now, listen to this back to my situation. You can tell, I could tell by meeting this man of God. This is something that he does all the time. He stays open to hear the king tell him what to even charge his clients because quite frankly, 
he's enjoying this time. It's not about the money for him. He said he's having fun right now. Wow, just exercising his authority, moving in the power of God, seeing the glory of God. And he said to me, he says, I want to make you happy today. Before he opened up the wall, I was like, how much? Now, we had gotten a previous estimate for this, and it was going to be like $290 per hour, $290 per hour. And they were saying that it could be, you know, a minimum of at least two hours and didn't know what to expect once they got into the, into the wall. So we're talking $290, $580 and above. He got in there. I asked him how much. He said, oh, a couple hundred, but I won't know for sure until I get into the wall. He said, it just depends on how much work I need to get done. He went in, saw in the spirit what he saw in the vision, fixed the problem. And then as he was leaving, he was joking with me. We had just a really awesome time of fellowship. Uh, this particular man, I want to say one other thing, at his church, he is the minister of music, creativity. See that? And... Um, he literally sings in Aramaic, he sings in Italian, and he sings in French, all by way of Holy Spirit. Those are not his native languages. He has learned this by praying in tongues and the Spirit just allowing him, taking him into those places with the understanding of what he's singing. Fun. I mean, this man is off the charts, okay, off the charts. Well, anyway... So we had talked about that. We talked about so much. And so when he was about to leave, he's like, are you going to pay me? Joking. And I said, yes, how much? Because he never told me how much. Listen to this. He said 65 or $75 in cash, whichever you have on you. Now, my car is in the shop at this point in time. I don't know what that expense is going to be. But I'm anticipating it's going to be interesting. And remember, we still now have to get the wall patched, paint, all that. He was sensitive, okay, to all of that. And I went right into our little draw, got the money, and I was led to give him 80. I was led to give him above and beyond what he asked for. So when you let the king of glory in, business leader, these are the kind of results that you can see. Okay, and I'm not, I wasn't even looking for a discount. I wasn't. He heard God, okay, and did what God told him to do. And that's where his blessing is coming from. And that's where your blessing is going to come from in your business. I know you have rates. I have them too. I have a business and about to start another one, okay? But what I am saying to you, and I did this the whole time I coached for 12 years. I did this the whole time I coached for 12 years. Be sensitive, okay, to the king of glory. What is it that he wants to do? Whose life does he want to touch? Who's, who does he want to be good to through you who does he want to make happy who because happy is another word for bless who does he want to bless mm. who does he want to show himself strong on their behalf through your business just keep your ears open and again when you're not constantly caught up in struggle mode yourself then you can bless somebody else all right so discern the time too okay if you're just starting out Yes, I still say st stay open to seeing in the spirit, hearing what God would have you to do, but you can be much more free to do this, all right, without any concerns when you have been blessed by God and made all the money that really you and your family need. I mean, how much money do you really need to live? Okay, there are three reasons why you need money. And I talk about this in great detail in Decreeing for Kingdom Wealth, a book that he graced me to write out on Amazon. You should check it out. But the point is, after you use money for those three reasons, you don't need any more. Okay? So that's the place where this man is in, this man of God is in, and that's the place that God wants to bring you into. Then, when you step into this place, you can just be free, all right, to do whatever he says. And I want to say this. Even if you're not quite in that place yet, it is those little steps of obedience where he's telling you, do this for your customer, your client, your constituent. Do that. Don't do this. Okay. Even as a landlord, say that. Make this decision. It's when you obey and exercise his wisdom, exercise and demonstrate his character demonstrate his glory, manifest his glory. Those are the things that lead you to the blessing. You never know. You never know. All right. Sometimes we 
are selfish and greedy and fearful. And that's what stops many of us as business leaders from obeying God. But it's those little small things that you do that can open up the windows of heaven where he can pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. So let the king of glory in. Let him do whatever he wants to do. Let him be in control of how you run your business. Let him be in control. All right. Every spiritual gift that he has given you, make it accessible to him. Make prophecy accessible to him. Make your dream life accessible to him. Make visions, okay? Night visions, day visions, open visions, transes, anything that he wants to do, yield to that in your business. Tongues, interpretation of tongues, signs, miracles, wonders, healing. Who knows? Maybe he might want to heal a a specific, you know, or particular client, constituent, or customer through you. But if that's not even on your radar, that's not even in your mindset, that's not even a part of your trajectory, your big picture view, then you're not even open to that, okay? So this is all about changing how you think about, okay, business and who is really in control. Is the king of glory in control? Or are your fears, your doubts, your insecurities, your what ifs, your shoulda, woulda, coulda, or what I need for me, my, for, and no more. Mm, Selfishness is not a part of the kingdom of heaven. It's not a part. Okay. So I just wanted to come on in today and remind you that God is the one who controls the who, the what, the when, and the where of the glory in your business. Okay. So let him do it. It's just that simple. Let the king of glory in. All right. Thanks for joining me today. Share this with someone who you know need to come into the place where the king of glory is in control of their business. It is time out for business as usual. It has been time out for business as usual. He wants to do some mighty things in the marketplace. The king of glory wants to come in to the marketplace. Let him. Apostle Karen Pina here, your glory teacher, heavenly success, and ascension specialist, signing out.